down in Epau back in high school. I actually had a beer bottle cracked over the bottom uh, back of my head. Um, so, yeah, it's, I mean, it's a scary situation, guys. Uh, and, again, as you saw Miss Ina there, she was really talking about the response times uh, from the Guam Police Department. We've all been there, you know. I mean, I feel like where our people are at right now is – when you have an emergency at the house, there's a conversation you have maybe internally or with your family members. Is it even worth it to call the cops? Because they're going to take forever to show up. It's going to have to, you know, who knows what kind of statement you're going to have to fill out. So I feel like a lot of people just don't even bother. Um, and that's really unfortunate. Uh, 709, Senator Jim Moylan uh, joined us in the link uh, Zoom room. I guess just your thoughts on that interview and this issue of uh, crime, uh, Senator? Yeah, absolutely, Chris. It's so unfortunate. Uh, I actually, I just heard that interview. Thank, thank you for replaying that for me. I know Ina uh, personally, and you know that's uh, <laughs> that that's really tragic. And, and her son also. I know him as well. You know, they are very kind uh, people. And uh, Ina is uh, graduated from uh, Academy of Our Lady, and she has been so involved in the. Uh, uh, community volunteer groups and has gotten me involved in it and a lot of the things that I, I didn't know existed. Uh, so her dedication to the island, her love for the island, uh, and she shares that uh, experience or, or that will with her son also. They are both really good people and it's just, it's uh, damn unfortunate and it, it should not happen. So um, it's, it's just, you know, and I can understand her feelings of, of what she experienced, and I, I wish that never happened to her or her son, but that's that's the reality that we're living in right now. And uh, my duty, I, I think, as senator, and we've been pushing for public safety uh, for a long time, uh, since the 35th Guam legislature, is we need, we need more uh, boots on the ground. We need more soldiers, right? These, these uh, GPD, of course, you know, they're doing what they can, uh, but when you got so many people uh, assigned to uh, security for for the governor and the lieutenant governor, and there's no budget uh, amount set for them, so they, the sky's the limit. They can spend a million dollars, two million dollars, if they wanted on executive security. But when we should be really focusing on on uh, our island residents and and what a tragic case this has been for Ainan. So. Uh, you know, we, we, I've done some things to ensure we can expedite the, the process of hiring uh, by shortening this time to get police officers hire, hired. We also identified that we don't have regular cycles that need to be mandated um, uh, every, every, every budget, right? So we put that in there too to say uh, no more than 40 officers. You, you must have a cycle continuous. We identified the problems in the post requirement where Folks may be interested in becoming a, a peace officer with, with whether, uh, whether you be in corrections or customs or GPD, uh, can't pass the test. So we, we work with um, G, uh, GDOL and GCC to, to create a, um, a track, right? If you wanna be a nurse, go into this track in high school. If you wanna be an electrician, go into this track in high school. If you wanna be a peace officer, go in this track. Uh, so when you come out of high school, uh, you're, you're ready to take that test and you pass that test. We need more police force. Uh, we need uh, money dedicated for the police force. We need regular cycles in the police force. And, and we got to budget this uh, executive security. Uh, and I, I want that to be shown also in the budget. You know, right now they have an open, open ticket, right? There's no budgeted amount for executive security. And if they want $2 million, okay, allow the legislature to put that in. Uh, but those, uh, but after that, you know, that's all you can do. But right now they, they don't know how to work work with uh, the administration. They, they just are called anytime they want to, right? When when they could be out on the beat, when, when the chief of police could uh, uh, say, we, we need more up there, or we can respond quicker uh, in that case, like when Ina was calling. So. I'm really disappointed that that happened to uh, such a such a good lady, you know, and her loving son. So, uh, it just makes me uh, want to do more uh, to ensure that we can have the laws uh, and the budget uh, correct to to prevent this. Th that kind of violence should not be happening on our island. There's no reason for it. Yeah, and I mean, if law enforcement got a big fat raise, then they better be doing a big fat better job. That's all I'm saying. Yeah.
Uh, Senator, I know you just came from D.C. Uh, let's go ahead and unpack your luggage from that uh, trip, <laughs> if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, thank you for that. I, I was there. Fortunately, I was there at the time when we had the State of the Union address, too. It wasn't planned that way, but but it was a great experience. We had all the congressmen and the senates were all in there. So um, D.C. was it was full of people in suits. And I got to meet more more than I expected. You know, we, we set up meetings before we went. And we just wanted to go there to bring to bring Guam's message again to to DC to, to just share with them. Uh, I, I can I can say oh this did not cost the taxpayers any money. You know, I, I flew on my own dollar as well as my staff that came along with me, so that's full disclosure. And um, we, we're of course we're looking at Guam's economic re recovery plan, and I wanted to meet uh, some folks that I could share that idea with, and, and we certainly did. We had the opportunity to sit down with several several congressmen and congresswomen too one-on-one -on -one meetings that I was astonished that we had the opportunity to do. We, we also uh, shared our congressman's uh, current bill there, that HR 6504, to promote that. And that's with uh, recognizing tomorrow owned businesses, right? So we can have that opportunity to, to bid like Alaska, like Hawaii, where, uh, and especially with all these uh, construction is going on in Guam to give our local community the opportunity just not to be a subcontractor, but maybe something even even larger than that. So we, we met with those folks and, and we got a good response. Um, you know, we also brought up the inequities that, that we have regarding COFA and SSI and our, our, and our, our veterans, right? We just echoed those feelings that we know are long uh, is a long time pro uh, problem with our island, and it's just a matter of keep on repeating that message and building relationships uh, with these folks. And some of the relationships we built was um, from American Samoa, uh, Amata, the congresswoman, a very very kind lady. Uh, she let us into her office. We had a good conversation. I was able to sit down one on one with her. We have a, a lot of similarities also. And she told me her. Uh, her memories of uh, Madeline, uh, Congresswoman Madeline, when she was in that office too. And so she really respects the island and she did have the opportunity to come out and we invited her to come out again. I also uh, had the opportunity to meet with um, Congressman Kalihi, Kal Kalili uh, Sablan of, of Northern Mariana Islands. Uh, again, we talked about the situation there and how we can work together and especially with that current HR 6504 bill. Uh, met with uh, Jennifer, a uh, congresswoman from Puerto Rico, and it, it was amazing. They, they already had their uh, plebiscite done. Uh, Puerto Rico wants to become a state, and uh, I met with their representatives also to explain the situation. Uh, to, uh, they explained it to me, and it was really remarkable how they, uh, I think it's uh, millions of people, of course, in Puerto Rico, but they came together, they voted, and now they're moving forward. So there are steps ahead. Uh, of us, and I, I, it was a learning experience to to see what they did. But now their bill is being introduced on the floor, and they had a press conference outside the uh, Capitol, uh, which I participated in and got to see how how things operated there. So that that was great. I'm I'm happy for Puerto Rico. They, they decided on statehood. Guam needs to decide on something as well, and hopefully we just need to move move this forward. And I, that's what I want to make sure I can accomplish at least for for my time in politics. Uh, other, uh, others we met was uh, Congressman Don Young of Alaska and, and uh, Whitman of Virginia and uh, Chris Stewart of Utah and, and there's this great character, uh, Tim from Tennessee and also Young Kim uh, from California, Congresswoman who uh, was came from Guam also. So we had a good conversation too. Um, so uh, they all said, you know, consider, consider us, us friends. And that's my main goal was just to establish that relationship going going forward. And I, I guess I got to say though, I, uh, a lot of the door opening there because of COVID and because of the threats and everything happening, you can't get around that place and go to all those doors we did uh, in three days without the help of our uh, Congressman Michael San Nicholas and his staff, uh, Eloy, um, Ellie, and and uh, Talina, Tanelta. I'm sorry, uh, their hospitality was great and. Um, I, I really I'm thankful for what they did for us while we were there. So it was a good experience. I, I like to go back again and uh, see what else I can do. Uh, the weather was great also uh, to see also the uh, activities going on during the State of the Union address was was remarkable. 
and to, to the history of, of that place is, is something just amazing. And, and I'm glad I had the opportunity to share uh, the story of Guam and to meet all these Congress folks. Uh, wow, it sounds like you're running for Congress. Was that the official <laughs> word? I know Nestor asked you, but I mean, obviously, if the congressman's showing you around the place, uh, I would just, I mean, can we just stop pretending here? <laughs> well, there, there's no secret that I did pick up the packet. And obviously, it's a big decision to make. And and I'm, I'm a senator now, but I really, uh, it's something I would inspire to do. I just need to uh, lock down and make that date. And I, I can tell you, Chris, we, you're gonna you're gonna find out really soon. Okay. I <laughs> heard. I mean, how soon? soon? Because I, I know that you said that you wouldn't run for Congress unless Congressman Michael Sinicholas wasn't seeking re-election. Um, yeah. And well, so, do you yeah. know something? Because I'm hearing that he's gonna announce his uh, candidacy in mid March, which is about a week away. Yeah, but I, I totally respect my my congressman now, and um, you know he he. He, he was very helpful in getting all this uh, uh, federal funds to us, and he continues to, to work at his job. So respectfully, right, uh, um, if he continues that position, uh, we, the island should continue on what we've been receiving too. He's made um, good communications with across the aisles, and that's what I was trying to do and learn as well. So my, my whether the congressman runs or not, I, I can just... Uh, t tell you if he runs for not a, or for another seat he, he'll he's the one that, to let us know what when that will happen and uh, it, it will be good I think it will be good uh, likewise for myself um, if my intent whoever's in the seat at that time it is uh, it, it you know if I had to challenge I, I um, that, that that decision will come later uh, what do you I, think I, though I you think you think you could take congressman Mike though in an election uh, Oh, now, Cong Congressman Mike is is an excellent person and is excellent for the job. Uh, whether I feel it, it's not the, necessarily the congressman himself, but whether I feel the island is is getting a good return for the investment that we have with the representative there, yes, I feel he is he is giving his all and he has done good for the island. Uh, it's just my personal experience that am I willing now uh, to go to go to another step. And picking up the packet was one thing, going there and walking the halls and walking through the tunnels of all the three uh, congressional buildings, knocking on all those doors was something I had to experience personally. And uh, I'm thankful for Congressman Mike and, and his teams um, to do that for us. Uh, so so, that, that's, that, so course, that's one thing that will play on my yeah, mind. And yeah. that's why I'm, I'm looking at it seriously, seriously looking at that. So you're saying you could take him in the in the general? Oh, <laughs> you heard it here. For, you heard it right, sir. That's what I thought no. I heard. Yeah, no, no, I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, and, it wasn't first, awkward at all, uh, uh, Senator, or Congressman. I mean, knowing that you might be running for his seat, showing you around D.C. You sure? Maybe he showed you like to the wrong doors because that's what I would do. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're gonna run against me. You might run against me. Yeah, I'll show you around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I, I think it was it was very kind of him and his staff. We they took the days. Uh, to be with us, took time away from his office to, mm -hmm. to share with us because he knows I'll bring this information back and he knows I'll continue uh, to fight for the island in whatever capacity I can. Uh, I'm, I'm fortunate to have an open relationship with our, with our congressman. Um, I'm thankful for that as well. And you know, th we just go on with how life wants to plan it for us. Okay, So, so um, in, in a future date, I'll make that final decision uh, and I for, I'll for sure let you know, Chris. I'll for sure please, let you know. please. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, on the Democrat side, too, there could possibly be challenges as well. You know, we can see where the administration could have, could have really worked closely with our congressmen. Uh, but but that didn't seem to happen yeah. at all. That's unfortunate. Well, let so me ask whoever's you this. the governor it needs to work together. You think if a Democrat is going to run for Congress, like let's say the one I keep hearing is Senator Talina, right? Um, if she's going to run for Congress, do you see Congressman Mike showing her around the same way he showed you around? <laughs> I, I would think, you know, that uh, how he showed the hospitality to us, it's, it's about the people. And if that's the, whoever the next person is, if, if that's the case, right? 
I, I think he has a, a good enough, uh, he's a good enough person uh, to ensure that. And I saw that from his staff as well. So what, what he did to me, I'm okay. I, I like to feel that I'm special, but I'm not that special. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm sure he'll open that door as well to others too. All right. Well, thank you, Senator. You're uh, welcome. Anything in closing, maybe session, is there a session coming up? Uh, anything you got going on? Uh, close to the end of the month. Um, we're still, we got to go through our core meeting uh, possibly next week to figure out what's going to be on the agenda. All right. In the meantime, happy mess tomorrow. Right Love the island of Guam. Thank, Viva. Thank you, Senator. Okay. Right on. Thank you very much. Senator, uh, Senator uh, James Moylan, uh, Republican. They're uh, unpacking his recent trip to Washington, uh, D.C. And um, yeah, so what we're hearing, guys, and I'm sure you're hearing it too, small island, 